Hello and welcome to Metavice, a podcast where we talk about all things music. Well, the things we care about. That's right, which is mainly metal music and live music. I'm one of your hosts, Karen, joined with your other host, Brian. Um, and we're in the car. Yeah, it's another road episode. <laughs> uh, we are driving back from Des Moines. Uh, Des Moines. Des Moines. Uh, Des Moines, <laughs> Iowa. Um, we were back last night for um, the Five Finger Show. Yes. Um, and I have that up here. That was um, Five Finger Death Punch with Marilyn Manson, Slaughter to Prevail, and The Funeral Project. Portrait. Portrait. The Funeral Portrait. Um, so at the Wells Fargo Arena, we went there last year to see The Freaks on Parade. Um, and then tickets for this, real quick, just getting that out of the way. Uh, $127.50 with $27 in fees. That's expensive. Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> very expensive. Um, wow. This setup was similar to what it was last year for Freaks on Parade, yeah. as well as Hogfest the last year as well, where the GA floor is sort of split. The first half is your normal GA admission, and the second half is seats. Um, yeah. Weird, though, I don't remember the other two shows there was a large open area in behind the, yeah. the seats like yeah. another lot of space where people could be standing i agree i feel like the pit was like further closer to the stage like you didn't have as much room yeah. and then there were seats and then there was another open ga behind the which seat. was like just empty there was nobody yeah. there yeah uh, and that was behind like the sound booth as well yes so you had like ga or stage ga seats and then right behind the seats where it was the sound booth, the, the sound stage, uh, front of house. I think the seats may have wrapped around that a little bit as well. Uh, possibly, I can't remember, yeah. Uh, but then at the end of that, there was basically nothing between that and the final right. section. So if you were sitting in that back section, there's like nothing there really that's in front of you. Yeah. It's gotta look weird as shit. Um, I'm surprised, cause like I remember going to, uh, I guess we went to Vets probably more than Wells Fargo. But, like, it was just an open floor. And, like, sometimes we would stand in the back or, like, you There's know, been be a lot like that, yeah. Yeah, um, like, and now everything is this, like, half seats, half open. There's a lot more of that now, it seems like. I, I don't, the only thing I can think of it is it makes it feel fuller. Possibly. Um, like, it looks fuller because... Because it did look pretty full and I would yeah. turn around and look. Because you'd have those seats where it were completely sold out, I think. Or for a lot of a lot of them were sold. Yeah. And people are just standing there in their seats. Um, I don't like it. But I don't like it either. It seems to be more and more common now. Yeah. I think we looked at um, uh, Denver to go to the Pepsi Arena or the Ball Arena or whatever the fuck it's called now. Because uh, we went out there for Corn a few years back. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. And that was a complete GA floor. That's because when a lot of the summer tours do their tours they're in these like shitty amphitheaters yeah. and Korn was doing the shitty amphitheaters but they went there and they didn't do that they did yeah. an actual arena um, which is why we saw Slipknot there also in 2019 right, right. Yeah. Um, but I think we looked for a show this year or last year and they had the split floor as the well split, yeah. maybe it's just point. more common now for the promoters maybe and again I think it's like it just makes it look fuller for the band Possibly. As well as you can upsell seats on the floor yeah. for people who want seats. Yeah. Because there are a lot of people who want seats, but now they can be on the floor as well. Yeah. And that's going to cost more than that 100 section. Where if I get seats, I'm going to want that 100 section. I'm not going to want to be on the floor. Right. Because if you're on the floor, you want to be able to move around and, and get as close to the stage as you want. Or if you want to back up, you like you want that floor experience. Yeah. So it's weird. Whatever. It's, it's what it is. Yeah. It's just something we've noticed last Yeah few times that these type of arenas are, are smaller right. arena type things. Yeah, the smaller arenas, yeah. Because we also looked up, because there were people, I heard a couple people at this show talk about... Um, Pfizer. Pfizer. They're like, this place is small, they yeah. should have done this at Pfizer up in Milwaukee. Yeah. And we were talking like, alright, are they about the same? Pfizer is about a thousand people more capacity than Wells Fargo For arena. concerts. For yeah. concerts, yeah. But this, like... Same as I think last year, they had the whole 200 section like closed off. Like, so what we saw Freaks on Parade there last Freaks year. Freaks on Parade. I yeah. thought they had the 200 section 
I remember, with people in it. I remember it being closed off, and I remember making that comment to you, like, oh, they don't even have, like, the 200 section open. Okay, I don't so. remember that. Yeah. But did they have it blocked off? Like, yeah, with the curtain. With the curtain around yeah. it? Yeah. Because they, they did, did this time as well to make it fill. Yeah. If, it was, if they didn't have that curtain, it's going to be empty. Empty. It's going to feel empty. Yeah, I think it would just be echoey without people up there. Maybe. I'm assuming. Maybe. Maybe the curtain does do some soundproofing so. as well. Um, but yeah, uh, very interesting to see this new sort of setup and new yeah. dish setup. Yeah. Uh, not a big fan of it, but we did get pit tickets, uh, which is what we wanted. Um, pretty expensive for pit tickets for this, but you yeah. got four bands with two pretty large names. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Five Finger and Marilyn Manson. Yeah, so, that's true. Um, I wonder though, let me look this up real quick. Yeah, so about a week before, we went to see Metallica, and that was three fifteen ticket. So this is but almost. But that's for two days. That's for two days, but that's this is double. Yeah. So, roughly the same thing. If if you consider Five Finger at the same caliber, same level as Metallica, no, <laughs> um, just a little bit more expensive. But I think last year we paid about the Metallica prices for Ghost and Omnimark. We did. We and did like one eighty. Yeah. Two Two bands. Two bands, and it was like one and a half. It wasn't even. Yeah. And that was promoted as a co-headlining tour. Um, this, I can't tell if it was or wasn't. I don't think so, because everything that I saw was like Five Finger, Marilyn Manson, Slaughter. I didn't even know Funeral Portrait was going to be there up until like a week ago. Yeah. So like everything was like, you know, like it, it was always in my mind promoted as Five Finger Show with Marilyn Manson and Slaughter as support. Yeah, and it's, it's also weird because um, this tour is one of those filler-type shows. I don't know what to call it. Yeah, like they're... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, I, mean, yeah. I was just going to say, so, like, Five Finger and Nine Inch Nails are on tour right now. Not Nine Inch Nails, uh, Ice Nine Kills yes. are on tour right now with Metallica on their M72 tour. And that is they're going to a city and doing the quote-unquote takeover for the weekend. Yep. Metallica will play two nights, and they have... Four supporting acts, two different acts per per night, um, and, and five beers on Sunday with ice nine kills. Night. Yeah, and so they have that downtime in between the weeks, and they're making the most of it, and they are tacking on a new and different tour to go with it. So, Ice Nine is on tour with in this moment, and Avatar, Avatar, and I think one other. Oh yeah, I can't like remember. THX or something. Uh, something I don't know if it was uh, Twin Temple or something. No, no, no. It's THX. Uh, Twin Temple's with Till. Okay. Um, no, it's like THX or something like that. Yeah. But they they did that basically that same tour last year, doing the same thing, filling dates in between the weekends. Yeah. Yep. And then Ice Nine will go and, and do their Metallica gig, and then they'll play with the other bands, you know, as part of their separate tour. And Five Fingers doing the same thing with Marilyn Manson, Slaughter Gravel, and Funeral. Yes. Um, but it's weird because at the same time, Marilyn Manson, Slaughter Prevail, and Funeral Portrait are also doing their own sort of tour. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so it's like when Five Finger can join in, Five Finger joins in. When they don't, then it's these other bands that are on it. Right. Um, so it's it's interesting. It's a. I like that bands are doing that, and they can. You know, they need to fill in the time that they're going to be on tour anyway. Uh, not everybody is, you know, like Metallica where they can just play two, two gigs. Yeah, two gigs, have a week two weeks off or one week off. And okay, make yeah. fucking millions of dollars doing only that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's sort of the, this tour setup. Uh, I don't think we said the name of the tour is boring. It's U.S. Tour 2024 or some shit like that. Awesome. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um how many U.S. tour or North America tours did we get in 2023? We always get a bunch, yeah. yeah. Um, but I guess anything else about the venue that we want to talk about before no. diving into the music? I mean, last year I think we were so excited to go back to it and been for, I don't know what, like 15 years or whatever. But... We did make a big trip out of it too. Yeah. We, we recorded for a vlog. We haven't posted that or yeah. edited it. We're anywhere near it. But that was a lot of fun because we got to go see Paul and Joey. Yeah. Uh, got to go pay our respects to them. Got to go to the Merle Hay Mall, got to do some record <laughs> shopping, got to see our friends Darla and Jerry, uh, and some other friends uh, that we, we've known forever. So it was, it was a good time to get back. And yeah. I hadn't been to Iowa 
in many, many years before that. Not like that, think. yeah. I mean, you've been to Iowa City, but not like... Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah, not... I don't consider Iowa City <laughs> Iowa for some reason. I don't know, it's weird. Um, but yeah, not not doing Des Moines that way, like what we yeah. used to do, so... And this was just a quick trip. I flew in after Comic-Con. Uh, you were in for the weekend for the fair. Yep. Uh, stayed with family the, the night before and then stayed in a hotel after the show on the way back. That way we cut the trip down a little bit, hopefully. Um, but yeah, this was just a quick little trip in and out uh, of to Des Moines. For me, anyway. For you, you Yeah, I've been here days. for a few days. But, I mean, this, for the Des Moines, or for the show part, it was a quick, Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. We drove up for the show, and now we're headed home, so. Yeah, a couple other things about the venue real quick, I guess, for me, that I just thought about. Uh, we did the same thing we did last year, where we walk through the Hy-Vee Hall, I think it's called. Oh, right, yeah. And you can take the stairs up into this, like, skywalk, and it takes you across to the first level. Um, not as long of a line up there, so we're able to get yeah. in super quick and easy. Yeah. Um, last year, we had the fun of, we got to go down behind stage by mistake. Oh, right, yeah, because, like, we got in an elevator, and she, like, let us off and she, yeah, it's like we, we were on the floor. She's like, yeah. oh, this is where you want to get. Which she wasn't wrong. It took us to the floor, yeah. just behind the stage. Yeah. Um, this year, however, our mobile tickets were the non-barcode ones, just the, like... Uh, like a tap. The, like, yeah. Um, like from your wallet. What are those called? NFC tags, basically, right? And you just tap it up there against the reader, and it beep, boop, you're good to go. The staff had no fucking clue how to make that <laughs> shit work. And... They were like, who has a barcode? We're getting through the line. Two people have barcodes. The other 12 or 14 of us have those beep bloop, you know, NFC tag type tickets. And the guy who was there, an older gentleman, was just like shaking his head and grunting. Like, oh, well, what was like he was so mad that we didn't have barcodes. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> now you have to go down to the ticket booth and they'll help you out. So we go down to the ticket booth, and we didn't get to the ticket booth because there was another couple in front. Yeah. And they basically said, like, we were told to come down here because we don't have barcodes. What do we do? And she, I think, said, we need to go back up and tap your ticket on yeah. the reader. And they're like, we tried that. It didn't work. They told us to come down here and talk to you. And she's like, no, you need to go talk to them. And whatever. There we was, didn't hear the whole thing. Yeah. We, we kind of... Left. Yeah, there was a couple in front of us that was getting very upset about this for some reason. Um, and she eventually turned, because behind us there were steps going up, from another entrance uh, where people, you could just see them going beep bloop. And she's like, I wonder if those ones work. And I was like, fuck it, let's go. So I just start walking up there. Yeah. And sure enough, they, they worked yeah. just fine. I mean, you didn't even say anything like, oh, we came from the other door. You're just like, you pulled out your ticket, they scanned them right away. Yep. It was fine. So, it, whatever. Um, I get it. Like, technology doesn't work with everybody. And I feel like the people there, I don't know if they're staffed or if they're volunteers, but I often feel like it's older people yep. who are doing it. Yeah, I'm sure that they're staffed, but isn't necessarily their their strongest suit for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, because even when we got down to the floor, the guy was like, "They <laughs> told me you're just supposed to tap your ticket to get your wristband into the pit area." I've tried three times with people; it doesn't work. And I was like, "Well, here, just try it again, but do this. Just hold it up, and I will tap it." Yeah. <laughs> and I did. He was like, "Oh, it worked." Yeah. Um. Whatever. Uh. It's, it's fine. It is what yeah. it is. Um, the other thing, you were going to the restroom. Uh, I pulled off to the side, and I was just sort of sitting there listening to the music up top uh, before heading back down, so before the show even started. Uh, and a woman walks up to me, and she's like, do you know how many bands are playing tonight? And she looked like she was in, like, event-type clothing, right? Like, in a uniform for the event. And I was like, oh, there's four tonight. She's like, oh, cool. What bands are there? It's like, oh, well, you have Funeral Prophet or yeah, you Portrait. Said the wrong name. <laughs> Funeral Portrait. Sorry, I'm fucking up this name so bad. Uh, dyslexia is hitting hard here. Um, Funeral Portrait. Funeral Portrait is first. I may have said Funeral Prophet or Portrait or whatever the sign down there says. Their backdrop. And then I was like, then you get Slaughter and Prevail, Marilyn Manson, Five Figure Death Punch. I was like, all right, cool, cool. Um, and I asked her, like, so do you, do you work here? What, what's going on? And she's like, yeah, I, I work. And they told me I can just go watch the show now. 
And I was like, oh, that's <laughs> cool. Yeah. Uh, and she's like, yeah, they don't really pay much. No, because I think I asked her, like, do you enjoy the music? Uh, or she seemed kind of like, oh, okay. And I was like, so is this not really your thing then? And she's like, no, I love, I love this kind of music. Um, I just didn't know who's going to be here. Uh, and I finished my shift. They told me I can go to work and just enjoy the show. And she's like, they don't really necessarily pay us that much, but you get to go see shows afterwards for free. And she's like, that's, that's worth it for me. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I mean, 120 bucks for a ticket, right? So you get a free show, you got to work a couple hours, and yeah, you're good to go. So I have a feeling a lot of those people are probably that type of worker then. Yeah, yeah. Probably it might be like a part-time gig or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, come and work on the weekends and do that. Like, I'd, I'd do that. Or like a Friday night, you yeah. know. Um, anywho, I asked her what she does. And she's like, oh, I worked the VIP meet and greet for Marilyn Manson. And I was like, oh, sweet. That's awesome. How, how was that? And she said they had about mid-60s show up for that. That's a lot. Um, and she's like, I feel so bad for this one couple. They drove five hours in. Uh the event staff here, so it's different staff that she worked at, and the different staff for, um, for the, like, ticketing, getting in, and the, and the server, not servers, the, the concession workers, right? Yeah. I knew concession there was different, just from... Oh, okay. Family working... Working with... A contract, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, she, she was saying this couple drove in five hours... And they tried to get in to do the meet and greet, and the event staff was basically like, you can't get in until doors open, which is 5.30. And she's like, okay. Well, then they waited until 5.30, show up to the meet and greet. And she's like, no, meet and greet is 3.30. You needed to be here at 3.30. They're all gone. I can't contact anybody. I can't do anything. You just missed it. Sorry. Um, I don't think she said it in that way, though. She didn't, no, <laughs> Like, no, you just said just... it in, like, an asshole way of, no. like, sorry, you fucked up. No, no, yeah. She... <laughs> I'm just reiterating yeah. that. I don't think it was said in that way. No, no, she was basically just saying that, like, the event staff fucked up here. They should have known that the meet and greet people needed to come this way, blah, blah, blah. And we've done one meet and greet? Only one, yeah. Um, but we've done other, like, at some other, well, Milwaukee Metal Festival I'm thinking of, but, like, where it's, like, a special event or whatever. Like a special paid paid experience, let's say that. And it was a little disorganized there as well because yeah. we were showing up. They told us to show up at... We had to be there at a certain time. I can't remember what it was. Well, I think we paid to do the tour. So it, at Milwaukee Metal Fest, I think we paid to do the tour at 5.15. We, yeah, we've talked about this. We either yeah. have a 666 or something. Yeah. But we were told to be there at a certain time. Yeah. Doors opened after that time. Yeah. We weren't able to get in until after that time. Then we got in, and nobody there had a clue that this was even sold. And so they were just sort of scrambling at the end. So it, it's kind of par for the course, I guess. Yeah. These events are very sometimes disorganized. And I've seen people talk about other meet and greets they do. And they don't find out or get the email with the details until, like, the day of. That say, you need to be here at this time. Um, I feel like Bloodywood was that way, wasn't it? I think so, right. Like, we didn't know until... But I mean, I don't know, maybe not. Yeah, but that's very frustrating, especially for people driving five hours. Yeah, yeah. To be like, not having the information until the morning of, or even late in the afternoon of, because again, for Milwaukee Metal Fest, it was also late in the afternoon. Um, thinking about it in my head now, it, it it can make sense to me if you think about you don't know when the band's getting in, and it kind of depends on what time they get in from the previous day. Because they have to travel between cities, right? And that could be a delay, so you can't say, be here at noon, because you're not sure the band's going to be there at noon. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I can see I can see it from that standpoint of, don't send the email out a week ahead of time, because you, you don't know the details just yet. But, that's just sort of my take from these one-off packages that you buy on top of things, is that they can be very confusing, and you don't get the information until super late, which is very frustrating. Right. Uh, and but yeah, the staff should have known. Me and greets could have gone through. Yeah, that one, that should be addressed. Yeah. I hope that they. 
got okay. a refund or something. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure she doesn't even know. But. Yeah, if it happened to me and it happened to us and they weren't going to give us a refund there, I, I, I'd try to email to get the refund, right? To be like, hey, here's an explain what happened in the email. Um, and then if they're like, sorry, no refunds, then I'm going to my credit card. And yeah. like, I reached out to them. They're not honoring this. It's a service I did not get. Exactly. Like, your credit card company will... Unless you're doing this all the fucking time, they'll just blindly. There you go. Yeah. Um, well, depending on how much it is. Yeah. But the meet and greet should be at that right, I think. Yeah. It's not thousands and thousands of dollars you're spending. Yeah. If it's like a $5,000 charge, then maybe they're going to look at it a little bit closer. Anywho, um, those were the two sort of things that I wanted to talk about with the venue ahead of time. Um, if you have nothing, I guess we can just dive right into the yeah. bands. Yeah, that's fine. Normally we do the set lists, um, don't really have them up, we're driving, and we did kind of pull them up on our phones. But they don't uh, before. seem correct. They don't. <laughs> Marilyn Manson seems somewhat correct, okay. but okay. We'll, since we're not going to do it for all of them, we'll just skip it this, yeah. this time yeah. around, and yeah, who knows, we'll, maybe we'll keep doing it, maybe we won't, I don't know. Um, I like doing it, but... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we do add it to the playlist, so if you are interested, you can always check out our playlist yeah. to see what it is. We'll add it. Well, um, Five Finger won't be able to be because we've heard Five Finger twice yeah, so this the year. The way we so. do the playlist is the first time we see a band, we put their set list in order on our playlist. If we see them multiple times, we only put net new tracks on there in the order we would have heard them in. So yeah. because this is a Five Finger headlining tour, there are tracks that we yeah. can add. Yeah, we got a couple extras. Because we've only seen them with Metallica and that's a shortened set, but yeah, um, funeral portraits, right? I had that right. Funeral portrait. Yes. I think it's the funeral portrait, possibly. Possibly. But sorry. They're from Atlanta. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I knew nothing about this band. Yeah. Uh, like we always talk about, when there's a new band, we like the live experience to be our first experience, so we go in blind. Um, went in blind this time around, and um, what did you think? <laughs> I think, what did I text you? That it was country rock? You did say country <laughs> rock, yeah. It was interesting. Um, they had good energy on the stage, kind of like in a punk rock type way, but from the vocals, it just seemed country-ish, like, like how a country song is sang, and then more like a rock tone than like a metal tone, in my opinion. Yeah, that's the... Similarly and different vibes for me. Um, the energy on stage was amazing. I thought they had yeah. a lot of great fucking energy. Yeah. They worked the stage really well. They worked the crowd really well. Or, or tried to. The crowd didn't seem to get super into it. No, there was like one person. <laughs> there were a few, yeah, yeah. That were like super into it, which is yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, but it didn't feel like a lot of people were there for them. They don't think there were a lot of people who yeah. really knew who they were. But maybe there were. I don't know. It just, from my standpoint, it felt like... Uh, the crowd wasn't into it, um, which is too bad. It was a really good show. They put on a really good show. Yeah. I heard somebody say that up until this tour, they haven't played for more than 500 people. Oh, for real? Yeah. So, oh, shit. Yeah, so, I mean, this is... They must be a new band. I don't know anything about them. This is a and, big step up. Yeah, yeah. They've I'll been just, around for a few years because he did say one of the tracks is like, this is two years old now. Oh, yes. Yeah, you're right. Uh, you're right. One so, of the baked hits at the end, I think. Yeah, and I haven't been able to look anything up because obviously we're in the car. But I did hear somebody say that last night. So, I mean, kind of like the internet. It could not be true. But. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like your bar conversations. It's yeah. one person saying something that they heard. And yes. Yeah. But that phone conversation as well. Um, the country vibe, I got a little bit, but not a whole lot. It When I think of country rock, uh, when you said that, I was thinking they sound a lot like Shinedown, which you have said Shinedown is country rock as well. I feel like they sound country too, Shinedown does. They do have a couple tracks that do sound kind of country, but for the most part, I don't hear that in Shinedown. But then again, I don't listen to, nor have I really ever listened to uh, country music, especially that 2000s uh, rock pop country yeah. Which is sort of where I think you're hearing that sound in yep, your head. exactly. Uh, so I'm not familiar with that shit music at all. Um, where back 
than you listen to a lot of it, so that might be why you're getting it. But they definitely had more of a Shine Down Three Days Grace vibe to me, their sound. Yeah, very radio friendly. And we even yeah. heard, I mean, I think it was on Rock 108, um, I heard, we heard a Funeral Portrait song. Did so. we? Yeah, you were sleeping. Oh, so you heard it. Yeah. Uh, okay. You subconsciously heard it. I guess. Uh, I didn't know that. All right, cool. <laughs> yeah. um, I Again, I like their set a lot. I like their energy. Um, I want to hear them more, like, hear the songs, again, like, when we add them to the playlist. Yeah. To see what I think. And I think the next time we see them, it is very much a, like, you can sing along, like, a, you know, like, if you know the lyrics, like, you sing along. If you heard if it on the radio yeah. or, you know, have listened to it again, yeah. they're very much that vein of Shine Down. Yes. That is yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I agree. I do want to see it again. I want to see with the crowd more into it. I'll be more into it because I'll know the songs better this time around. Yeah. Um, yeah, no. Uh, I, I enjoyed their set a lot. Um, just didn't know it that, that Yeah. Well. They only played for 20 minutes. Like It was a quick set. Total 20 yeah. minutes. I looked at my watch and they started at 6.30 almost on the dot, and then they ended at 6.50. Well, they did also so. have the two um, clocks on the sides of the stages. I don't know oh, if you I ever did. noticed those. I did see them, but I didn't see them during Funeral Portrait. Oh, so. I did. I was paying attention to that to see how long they were going to play. Because oh, okay. I was curious as well, with there being four bands, how long... Oh, and, how long it's going to go. And essentially two headliners at that point. Yeah. How long it's going to be, how long each set's going to be, and all, all of that. Another interesting thing that will come up later, I guess. When we were standing in line to get in through that skywalk, they did have a, a thing flash up for um, the show that night. They said 6.30 to 11 was the time for this oh. event, which will come in handy later in the night. When Ivan Moody comes out and there's some, some shit that happens later that he references this as well. Um... But yeah, no, I was watching that too, and it was a quick set, which was a, your standard opening set. Yeah, exactly. especially when you have four bands. I yep. think that's standard for them to play 20, 25 minutes. So. Yeah, exactly. Um, which then leads into our next band, Flutter to Prevail, which just finished headlining uh, Milwaukee Metal Fest, yep. which is where we saw them for the first time, and a much longer set for them there because, well, you're the headliner. Yeah. Here you're the second opener. Yeah. Like, but even for Milwaukee Metal Fest, they played almost all their popular songs, like the, all of them that I know, and then even they covered Duhas, and it was only an hour long. So I just don't feel like they have the catalog to do much more than that. Does that make sense? It does. I mean, it's also a festival, so you, as a headliner of a festival, you don't get that super long set in general if you're at your own yeah. show. Um so I felt like it was a proper length for a headlining show. I don't know their music all that well. You know a lot better than I do. There were definitely tracks then at outside of Duhost at Milwaukee Metal Fest that they didn't play here. Oh, right? yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because pretty... they only played six songs. Oh, is that all they played? Mm -hmm. Just pretty, like, yeah. in and out? Yeah. Um, they did do a Wall of Death. I remember that. I think they should do the Wall of Death during Viking. Like, I think that that would... I don't know what's... Sorry, I don't know the song names that well. But I, th I just feel like the, the beginning of Viking would be so much better as a wall of death. Like, okay. cause they do that recording part, and then it, like, breaks um, down right away. And I'm like, oh, that would have been so much better. The wall of death was super early. It was, like, the second track. It was the second track. And that floor is so small for a wall of death. It was. It didn't... It didn't go very It didn't much. go very long, no. Yeah. They did do a um, circle pit a little bit later as well. That was, I think, much bigger than the wall of death. Um, I wasn't paying super close attention to their set. Oh, right. I forgot. Uh, I yeah. was on call for work that night and got an alert, so I was on my phone in the back trying to address some shit, uh, which didn't work because there's no single down there for some fucking reason. As soon as I get up uh, to the stairs, at the top of the stairs, and started working, so... I missed a good chunk of their set yeah. because of work. Um, you were able to catch almost all of this. You were actually at all the sets. Yeah, I, I saved. I, yeah, I um, saved for the whole set. So, so what, what were your thoughts then? Like for me, again, not super familiar with their music. I do like it. I like their performance at um, Milwaukee Metal Fest, but super early into their set, I did have to sort of step out yeah. and miss most of their set. So. Uh, they were the second opener, as we said. Um, so 
when we didn't even say this, but when Funeral Portrait played both Funeral Portrait and Slaughter's Slaughter to Prevail's um, uh, drum kits were on the stage, so they had to kind of play around both. After Funeral Portrait, they did take down their drum kit, um, and so when Slaughter to Prevail played, it was basically their drum kit, but all of Marilyn Manson's stuff was behind them, so they didn't have much room. They did have it draped off, so they yeah. just had that little bit up front, yeah. yeah. But I think that they did very, very well with the little space that they had, where at Milwaukee Metal Fest, they were playing the ballroom headlining, and so you have this teeny tiny drum kit, no other props, and then just them on the stage, and I felt like it looked very empty at Milwaukee Metal Fest, where this, I felt like, was more proper, for them and like the stage Alex, fit what they had yes what they exactly were doing. exactly because they don't have much of a show aspect right now I, I don't know if they ever will or if this is like you know just play the music and yeah i guess the show aspect is sort of the costumes to some extent of the face masks yeah, for they all were the drummers masks, yeah. um alex when he was at milwaukee metal fest came out with the mask yeah. on and took it off after like the second or third track yeah here he just didn't wear it at all um one guy was in like a ghillie suit, yeah. um, your, your sniper sort of suit. Uh, at Milwaukee Metal Fest, they were all in like track suits, I think. Uh, track suits, yeah. So like I think it's suits. more of the costume and just their stage yeah. energy. Yeah. The little bit I did see last night, I did feel like their energy was good on stage. They were moving around, working both sides, uh, so yep. you could see all the musicians like come around and play your section. I thought that was really good. Um, but I get what you're saying. It was a smaller feel to the stage yeah. than the ballroom. But it seems like it fits better to have a smaller area for what they do because they don't do the props and they don't have, like, backer. Um, I guess they had a banner that says Slaughter to Prevail, but they don't have, like, backing lights and they don't have, like, other things yeah. on the stage with them. So right now I think that I liked it even better. Like, Milwaukee Metal Fest, I liked it because they were headlining and it was awesome to finally see them. But I liked this show better because it seemed more intimate and more, well, at least for us in the pit, it seemed more intimate. But then also, I felt like the space worked better for them. That's interesting because, I mean, think of, like, Lamb of God. They also don't have much of a stage show going on. They no, have Randy jumping all over yeah, the fucking place. Yeah, and their drum kit's bigger, and the drum kit's normally up so, yeah, on a riser. Raise that up a little bit, and then they usually have, yeah. like, the side signs or something yeah, that yeah. you see a lot of bands have yeah. where they'll pull out um, just those, like, drapes or some shit. Like, yeah. the cloth things with some imagery on it. Right. That makes it feel fuller. Where, you're right, they don't really have that for Slaughter just yet. Yeah. Um, and I think, like, the drum kit is just a basic... I, I don't want to use the word starter drum kit, but it doesn't have... I mean, it's not like... You don't have all you the You don't have the double drum. drum you don't heads, have, yes, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it just fits better on us. It look, looks like the stage is fuller on a smaller stage. Yes, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, other than that, how was their, the rest of their set? Oh, I, I loved it. The crowd was, was good? Yeah. Yeah, everybody... I mean, I think a lot of people were excited to see them. Um, and even some people, like, as soon as they started, like, you know... I can't do it because I'm driving, but you know, like how the two guys will like look at each other, and, like maybe like shake each other, like oh my god, like this is awesome. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. I saw that happen, so I mean, because they're just super excited yeah, to see slaughter. Yeah, or like they didn't know who they were, and then as soon as it starts, it's like oh shit, like this is awesome, sort of thing. Yeah, it's a band. I'm not sure how a lot of people find. I mean, they're not going to be on the radio. Yeah. Um, yeah. But everybody's streaming now anyway, probably, and it just sort of pops up. So. Right, right. And I, I mean, I found them a couple of years ago after. The, they left Russia. Um, it, there was an article in like either online or it was in like one of those magazines that we have. I can't remember, but that's how I found them. Gotcha. And then I'm like, shit, I need to look these people up. <laughs> like, yeah. So cool. Yeah, uh, I figured out my issue at the very end of their set. So I was up there, went to the bathroom, and then as I was walking out of the bathroom, everybody was fucking coming up. <laughs> I was like, oh shit, perfect timing, I guess. Uh, but unfortunately, I mean, yes. did miss their set. It sucks that you missed it. Yeah. I'm just got, I got worried that like we were gonna have to leave or something because we don't have obviously we don't have your computer with us or right. anything. So. Uh, which is whatever we accepted that going in, we knew that was a possibility. Um, but able to get it sort of looked at and resolved through my phone and didn't have to worry about anything. Um, yeah. Anything else for slaughter? No. No. Can't wait for the next show to see them. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, I think they're just going to get bigger and bigger and oh, bigger. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, they're huge. I mean, uh, especially after they played Wacken and, like, I don't know, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's huge. Seeing them as, like, one of these first openers is not going to last long at all. No, no. Um, Someday we're going to be like, remember when I saw them, with, like, in a small venue? Yeah, it's just weird that we saw them as a headliner now as, like, the second opener. Yeah. It's so fucking weird yeah. to think of a band like that. I mean, um, but seen other bands like that where they're headlining and then they're opening so not like at that not to me that's a bit of a drop to go from headliner to second opener but on four bands you gotta think that they're they're second on the bill when they're with Marilyn Manson right so yeah I mean it, they're kind of combining these tours together it does so. yeah 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 um that's that's fair um but yeah as you said Marilyn Manson he was our next uh band so yep. check out um We've seen Marilyn Manson once before yep. at Chicago Open Air 2016. Yep. Um, kind of a shit performance. I was very disappointed. I was super excited to see yep. Marilyn Manson. I uh, had liked him early on in my music going career, sort of just exploring music. He was definitely one of the artists that I was a big fan of. So who headlined that night? Was that Slipknot? I think it was. I think that was Slipknot, um, Five Finger then Manson before that working the yep. bill from top to down yeah I was going to say that at that time also Slipknot was on tour with Marilyn Manson as well okay okay that so makes that, sense then. yeah yeah I think that's what it was okay um back there in 2016 um I have to go back and look I think that's what the bill was no I think you're right because I knew it went Marilyn Manson Five Finger and then I think it was Slipknot on yeah. the main stage and then I can't remember who was on the second stage that night. Yeah, I can't um, right Because basically between every... So they, it was like they would play for 45 minutes and somebody on the second stage would play and then yep. like Five Finger played and then somebody on the second stage played then Slipknot. Yep, your so, normal like festival yep. sort of set list and set design thing. Yep, yeah, exactly. So, at least for a two stage. Yeah. When you have more than two stages it's like everybody's going Everybody's just once. playing at once. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that performance <laughs> he was visibly not happy that he was before Five Finger. So, yeah, we don't know for sure what I'm it was. He pretty just, sure. <laughs> he, sure. We can... We don't know 100% sure. We've always interpreted this a certain way. Um, we talked about it during our open air podcast. But, yeah, no, I agree. He was definitely visibly unhappy. Possibly a little drunk yeah. as well. Um, or something. <laughs> he didn't really say shit about being unhappy or anything. It was just a piss poor performance. Yeah. But and it was kind of like a, like I'm going to sing this song and then I'm just going to like walk to the back and I'm going to sing this song and then walk to the back. Well, and yeah. Like, but I mean that could easily be like I'm just drunk or hungover or been. something. It could have been. But yeah. Uh, like in any case like just after that performance it was like it was a piss poor performance. I've always heard that Manson shows are amazing. They're like this shock rock. There's so much going on. So much theatrics that go along with it. And we got a little bit of the theatrics there as well. But it was just sort of going through the motions and being pissy about it. And we were... I was unsure what the fuck was going on. I, again, I just thought after the show, like, he was drunk. And he just gave a fucking pissy-ass performance. This was lame. What the fuck? And I was very upset. Until Five Finger went on and Ivan was like... Yeah, so we're, uh... Our lawyers are better. Yeah. But we have better lawyers. Something about we are on the stage at this time at night because our lawyers are better. Yeah. yeah. And that's where we started to assume that it was... He was mad that he was before Five Finger Netflix. Right. That Manson was. It could have been other things. It could have been the headliner of the second stage was pissed they weren't in their slot. Maybe. There was nobody saying about whose lawyers were better than whose other than Five Fingers lawyers were better than somebody else's on that tour yeah we just took Marilyn Manson's shitty performance and attitude to be him being pissy about that yes that's true like it could have been like oh Five Finger you know like maybe somebody on the second stage had a problem that they were headlining the second stage or they were on the second stage instead of the main stage or something right I don't know and that's when this was announced with these two bands we were joking amongst ourselves that, like Oh, they must have got over their little beef or something. Yeah. Maybe there never was one. And Maybe. it was them and somebody else, right? Maybe. And 
there never was any beef between Manson and Five Finger, and they've always been friends or some shit. I, I don't know what it is, but we've always assumed that's what the or case was. Or it's been was. eight years and nobody cares anymore. Exactly, that too. <laughs> um, the point is, we don't know what was actually going on back then with who and who else, other yeah. than Five Figure and somebody. Yeah. Um, and in any case, right now they're on tour together, and there seem to be much love amongst all the bands yeah. supporting each other and whatnot. But uh, when it was first announced, that was my first thought. was like, oh my gosh, like, yeah. <laughs> look at it now where they're supporting Five Finger, so. And when it was announced, I was also excited because I was like, shit, all right, maybe I'll get a better Manson performance yeah, yeah. than we did in 2016. And? I did think it was better. It wasn't as theatrical as I had hoped or thought it would be. Right. Um, it was a lot more toned down than what my memory or my expectations would have been from back in 2016 or even early 2020s, um, 20, mid-2020s. mid-2000s? This one, yeah. We're yeah, mid-2020s right now. <laughs> yeah. Way back 20 years ago uh, yeah. when I first started getting into metal music. Like, those performances, the little clips I've seen and everything are like, oh my god, that looks fucking awesome. I would have loved to see that type of show. Yeah. Um, but it was a lot more toned down. A lot it is. more lighting effects than anything else. Yeah. What did you think about the lights behind them with the smoke? Uh, it wasn't bad. I liked oh, it. Oh, okay. At first. That's so funny because I bet you if it was a metalcore band up there, you would have been like, this is shitty ass. I don't like the lighting. I don't like the smoke. I. No, 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 no. I. <laughs> there were moments at the beginning where the lighting was a bit much for me. Okay. With the strobe lights and just bright, bright white backlights. Okay. But it didn't last long. It dimmed down and it was more of the red and then there was the smoke to kind of help blur it out a little bit to make it more feel fuller. Okay. It's with this, when it's just the straight behind the act, uh, yeah, behind the act, behind the band and the lights blaring into the crowd constantly that I get fucking fed up with it. And Corey Taylor's show was like that too. They had the wall of lights behind them. Uh, Crater and Sepatora's tour was like that as well, where it was those straight up and down lights. Bold for my Valentine, uh, and who the fuck they were with. Same way, like all those sort of lights. I hate that so much with it just bright white light shining into the crowd, into my eyes the entire night. Okay. This was more there were moments that were very frustrating and I did have to look away or look down to avoid like the light sensitivity and whatnot but it was a lot better than okay. other shows I've been to okay there was often time so we were on stage uh, stage left for this performance for this performance and so the bassist and one of the guitarists were on the right side and there was many many times where I couldn't even see them because of the lights and the smoke where I'm like, okay, so there's just one guitarist and Marilyn Manson and a drummer. That's what I would look at. I would not look over there either because <laughs> I couldn't see it. Yes. But if I looked straight ahead of me, you I could see, see I could see okay. my little section in front of me. Okay. That was a little annoying because, yeah, if you looked over that way, you couldn't really see what was going on for a lot of the show because of the lighting and whatnot. Yes. But I could look ahead of me and I could be fine okay. at that point. Okay. I just wondered what your thoughts were since every single time you see a metalcore band like that, you've just hate it. It's different lighting. Okay. It's not the same kind. Okay. okay. Again, like these were sort of straight up and down LED lights that would change. It was like an upside down cross with an extra cross. cross? <laughs> I don't know if that's like his new symbol or something or if it's been his symbol forever. Um, but yeah, there it's that symbol just repeated over and over. And when it would change to like the red light or the um, I guess they were green maybe sometimes. I don't know if there was blue. I can't remember all yeah, I don't remember. I just colors. remember red and white. Red and white for sure. But it, it felt different for okay. sure to me. Okay, that's fine. Um, you're getting very passionate about this. I, I hate the backlights so much. <laughs> and I knew you were going to ask something about that. Because you and Five Finger had lights that were like that Oh. as well. I guess the Five Finger ones I remember is more like lasers. There were a lot of lasers. Um, and there were they also had like the strobe lights and just the straight oh, okay. down lights in my eyes as well. Um, not, again, not as bad as other bands who just sort of basically leave them on the entire time. I see. Um, and so especially that leave it on the entire time when you're trying to get like that silhouette look to you. 
uh, Lincoln Park did it in like their Meteora music video or something. I think that's where it made it like blown up and people loved it. But I hate that fucking look so much. The interpreters? Interrupters. The interrupters. We saw them with Vlog and Molly a few years ago. And that was a that fucking was horrible, shit though. show. Their, like. their lights were the worst stage lights that we've ever, I've ever, ever seen. That, no. But the best lights I think I've ever seen were Udo, Udo at, Uda. Uda at uh, Milwaukee Metal Fest, which again was light behind the act, but it was downward pointed up with smoke and you got that just black silhouette of all yeah. the band members it was creepy eerie it fit the music so well their, their lights were fucking insanely good and this is a band playing the second stage early 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 on the first day of the festival like the second band or first band uh, that stage. yeah like second band I think and it's hard to believe that this band who must be super fucking young to be playing that early on young being in their career yeah, yeah. Um, to be playing that stage that young and have better lights than people who've been doing this shit for fucking decades it's so frustrating to see these big bands with shitty fucking lights Corey Taylor the main one that I can think about I fucking hated that show because of those goddamn lights um, any hoodles any hoodles <laughs> what about okay so not talking about the lights anymore but what about Marilyn Manson's performance uh it was better but still sort of boring at the same time yeah there's not um, much going on there's not you have they're all in there well old. he's 55 so yeah. I looked it up because my cousin at, thought that he was like in his 80s and I'm like oh no no I was like he's probably 50 and she's like, he's 50. And I'm like, yeah, probably 50. And I looked yeah. it up and he's 55. Yep. Uh, so not moving around a whole lot. But then again, you know, Randy's in his 50s and he's bouncing all over the place. Corey's in his 50s bouncing all yeah. over the place. I mean, he was moving around pretty good. Not like jumping and yeah. shit like that. But I don't feel like his music's that way. It's also not, yes. I mean, so, I mean. But the theatrical element of the show also, again, wasn't as theatrical as I've imagined it or seen it in the past. Yeah. Um. The other band members were sort of just hanging out, doing their own thing as well. Uh, a little bit of movement there. I feel like the Funeral Prophet... Um, what is it? Funeral Portrait? Yes. Sorry, fuck. I'll, I'll get this right someday. <laughs> the Funeral Portrait's um, stage presence and energy was much better than Marilyn Manson's. Um, I didn't know a lot of the music he played. I haven't listened to him in fucking years. So... What did we come up with? Like five songs that we remember? For you was Dope Show, um, uh, New Shit, Beautiful People, uh, what else trying to think now? Um, what was the other one? Uh, Disposable Teens, um, oh, and Obscene, Be Obscene. Obscene, yeah. yeah. Uh, so there's like five or whatnot yeah. songs. So... That album with uh, New Shit and Obscene, I think, was the last album I listened to or really got into of his. And that was mid-2000s, I want to say. Yeah, probably. And I really yeah. haven't listened to him much since then. I, I know he's got, like, new music out and whatnot, but I really have not listened to him since then. But it's that older older sort of stuff from that moment to a little bit before that yeah. I was really big on. Um I still really enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot better, again, than the 2016. Yeah. So I was happy that we got a better performance. Um, a little disappointed that we sort of, I guess, missed the prime. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Like, we should have went in, like, 2005. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and that's just a show we're not going to get from him. Yeah. We'll get it from other acts uh, that are doing something similar or along those lines. But probably not from him. Like, um... Twin Temple, not quite the same music, but their performance on stage is a lot more theatrical, I feel like, than this one was yeah, last yeah. night. Um, all in all, though, I enjoyed it. There was a, a woman behind me that was just fucking going insane, um, bouncing all over, bumping into me, and just like, uh, there's one moment she like threw a, pretending like she held a mic up in front of my mouth, like, I'm, I'm waiting for you to sing the words, and I kind of turned her into shrug, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know the words to this. Um, <laughs> Which, which sucks, but the, that was clearly why she was there. Um, yeah. 
and she was fucking loving it. That's awesome. Uh, I love that little interaction and just like the energy she was bringing. Um, I, and like all that shit, like I'm waiting for you to sing the words. That kind of chatter and talking and the singing, I'm completely fine with because she was fucking into the music. Oh yeah, she wasn't like talking to people. She was like yeah, she wasn't like well, how was your day today? I've seen them before. Right. I saw them at this show and this show, and it's awesome. Right. They're not doing this, but they did this song about like that kind of shit. Yeah, that's bullshit. But that like trying to get the crowd around you pumped and into the music like you are to you know raise the energy. I'm all for that. That's fucking awesome. Um, yeah, like. That alone, I think, was <laughs> that worth made it. it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I love seeing the crowd fucking get into it. Even though I wasn't necessarily into it, she was working to like get me fucking pumped and whatnot. So, um, no, I, I like that. Um, yeah. And again, all in all, a much much better performance. Just um, still a little. It just wasn't what you had yeah, envisioned. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I liked it. I mean, I thought it was. A very well put together performance for somebody who is 55 years old who hasn't really done much recently that sort of thing so I don't know I liked it I was excited to see it again because I know when we saw it in 2016 I was just you were so excited to see Marilyn Manson and I'm like that's what you were excited for yeah so because like I think then back in like 2016 I maybe knew like three songs of Marilyn Manson whatever they play on laser. yeah what they play on laser and the only other thing I knew was like how in the 90s he was blamed for everything which is bullshit, but other than that, I didn't really know who Marilyn Manson, or, you know, yeah. that sort of thing, so. He was a long set, too. I, yeah. I'm, I'm just wondering, since he's doing his own headlining, like, if he, I don't know how many songs he plays during the headlining set versus this one, but it seemed like a good hour. Yeah, no, it was a good lengthy set. Um, I, I was curious how long it was going to be, because he is, you know, that headlining caliber act, um, and like you said, they're off doing their own sort of tour on the side of the Five Finger thing. Um, and this wasn't necessarily promoted, to my knowledge, as a co-headliner no, tour. No, But it kind of felt co-headliner-ish yeah. for how long of a time he got on, on set. Um, so yeah, all in all, a good, a good set, for sure. Um, which leads to Five Fingers. Five Finger, the headliner. Uh, the, who we have seen like three times in yes. the last in one year. Uh, before they came on, I think it was Heather from Laser came out. Oh right, right. And tried to get this crowd pumped and whatnot. Um, there were a decent number of people who had left by this time. We ran into um, some friends we know, Matt and Shayla. Yep. Um, from Thrash the Titans that were at the show as well. So it was awesome to run into them and talk to them for a few moments. Uh, but they were one of the bands, or not bands. They were, <laughs> they were the band that left. <laughs> they were a few of the people who were primarily there for Slaughter and Manson. Yeah, yeah. And then they're not into, uh, what would your aunt call them? Uh, uh, finger Punch. Finger Punch. Yeah, she's not into the Finger Punch band. Or they weren't really into the Finger Punch band. <laughs> or as I've heard them call them, like, Five Flavor Fruit. Punch. I've heard that before. Uh, so they just sort of bounced early. Um, which cool. There were a lot of people that I felt like did that. Yeah. And that's, if that's your thing, that's your thing. Um, we like to stay for the full show if we can. Unless it's really not our thing. Then yeah. We'll, we'll yeah. leave early, but we'll at least give everybody a shot. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, even if, uh, so, so say Five Fingers is not our thing, like we've heard them before, so we could have been one of the people that are like, okay, I'm going to leave. If we never knew who they were, we then it would be like, end, yeah. yeah, let's just stick around and see what's going on. If it turns out to be shitty, then yeah. we would be like, okay, yeah. we gave it three songs, let's go. We have, a, and we have done it with openers. I don't like doing it, but we have done it with openers. We've left uh, openers? No, we've shown up late missing openers. Oh, on accident. Intentionally? There was one, um, I can't remember if it's Jer's 036 or... Um, 0936. 0936 with The Who and... Um, Asking Alexander? Asking Alexander, yeah. Yeah. And it kind of disappointed we chose to skip them because we were like, we saw them, we, we didn't like it. And then we saw like the last two tracks of their set. And I was like, oh, this is much better yeah. than I remember it. Yeah, we should so, have probably 
not skipped it. But I think that's the only opener we've intentionally skipped. I think so. Um, but again, we have done it, so yeah. um, okay. we just done the, we've done the reverse of yeah. starting with the opener, not but whatever. Uh, we're we're splitting hairs here. Um, oh yeah, Heather coming out and getting the crowd pumped, and she brought something. Okay, so up. Brian's going back to the laser girl coming out yes. to pump up the crowd. Yes. That was uh, going to be a really bad transition. No, oh, whatever. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, she came out, pumped up the crowd, and brought up something we heard on the radio driving in, is that this was part of Laser's 28th birthday yes. celebration. This was their birthday celebration show, um, which was awesome. Uh, growing up on Laser, listening to their music all the time growing up. And I was thinking about that this morning. I've been listening to them probably 20 of those 28 years. Just or about. more. Or 24. Close. Yeah. 23. <laughs> Somewhere in there. I've been listening yeah. to them for a long ass time. Yeah. Uh, which was, it's awesome. Um, I love Laser. Whenever we go back to Iowa, we did this this time. I, I flew when you picked me up. We're driving, listening to like Spotify. Spotify. Yeah. And then like 10 minutes in the drive, I'm like, wait, what the fuck are we doing? And I turn like Laser on. Because like I'm I'm back home, I'm gonna listen to Laser, and then once we get to the Iowa City area, we're switching over to Rock 108, which is a much better radio station <laughs> than Laser. Sorry guys. Yes. Um, they just are. Um, not a whole lot better, but you know, still a little better. Um, in any case, though, it's fun to go back home and turn on the radio and listen to those two channels that I grew up on, and, and just helped mold my musical tastes and helped me in my journey through their music so much um there's one part at the show she's like give us a big shout out if over those 28 years you've ever won free tickets to a show and i have never ever won free have tickets. you ever tried i also have not because <laughs> i don't want to call in for my voice on the radio so or like if you have to answer a question and you get it wrong <laughs> uh i'm fine with that oh, okay. but because I, I know all those questions. I know them all. Um, oh, okay. But normally it's yeah, just be caller 13. And, yeah, that's generally what it was. And yeah. you get this prize or something. Yeah. They also do like the uh, 12 Days of Axmas. Where yes. they give away free yeah. um, autographed uh, guitars and shit. Yeah. I, so, that I've never done, which would have been awesome. Yeah. The last couple of years, I haven't seen them with a booth at the fair. But then again, I don't really walk around those areas you know like Did they used to yeah so it used to be outside the like gosh i don't there's the bathrooms we always use like right off the bill riley stage they were like back there i have no clue what any of this is i, I haven't know. been to the fair in like a decade so. i don't i don't know how to explain it because it's i don't know building names and i don't know but they yeah. have a booth at the iowa state yes, fair yes i did not know that or i forgot yeah. all about that yeah uh but then the show started um it was, it's just kind of cool that I wasn't expecting this to be the 28th birthday for Laser. Yeah, we didn't know. And I'm, I'm really thinking that maybe the Ice Nine and In This Moment show was maybe a birthday celebration as well. Because they said like something about ending our birthday weekend with this. Oh. So I'm wondering if they had other shows that were also... Well, I know that there's a lot coming up because you're going to have uh, Not Fest Iowa as well. Yeah. yeah. And they're doing a bunch of promo for that and ticket giveaway and shit like that. Yeah. Um, like you could win a VIP experience off of yeah yeah um, the the radios laser <laughs> that thing yeah. that thing that we were listening you to can listen to at the radio and you give them a call you can win this thing yeah yeah um, so I mean yeah it's it's cool um, but yeah getting into the show again uh, Five Finger came out and again we we've seen them this is our third time seeing them over the last year or so fourth time what was we saw them in Detroit yep we saw them in Madrid we saw them in Chicago oh yeah and then we saw them so I guess yeah. three other times before this we've seen them so yes. we know what the show's gonna be like yes it's been a while since we've seen them as a headliner that was back in Tinley Park yes um, and we sat on the lawn we sat on the lawn yep this was a much different experience being right there yeah super fucking close in a small little pit area yeah I was gonna say that cause like so the first time we saw them at open air, we were probably mid field. Yep, yep. Um, and at that time, I don't think I really enjoyed it too much. I don't remember like 
Yeah, I don't think you knew their music that well. No, I, I didn't really start listening to their music until like 2018. I was a fan back then. I had listened to a bunch of their more popular shit um, up to that point. Yeah. I was, I was definitely a fan of theirs back then. Yeah. And then uh, when we saw them at Tinley Park, like I just said, we were on the lawn. So we were basically watching a screen. Yep. And then um, we All saw them Metallica's with... All the Metallica's were back ways. A bit yeah. Well. So like even... So much... <sighs> Probably Madrid, we were the closest to the stage for, I think. So we are kind of, like, yeah, yeah. in between the two barriers. But even then, like, they're not always in front of you. Like, they're, um, like, they're moving to the other side of the stage and, like, yeah. stuff like that. So this was really, really cool to be, like, right there and see the whole show and see what's, you know. Yeah, yeah. See it all, so. Um, yeah, and just, it, it was a really good show. And yeah. I like how Ivan came out and, like, with, like, a mask on, and he just, like, kind of moved. For the Purge. Like yeah, the for the Purge. purge. Oh, is it? Okay, yeah, yeah. okay. I was just like, oh, that's really, really cool to... I never watched the Purge, no. I feel like. <laughs> but I thought that was really cool to see. And that's not when he had the baseball bat. He came out later. No, he had the baseball bat, yeah. Was that and when he, it was? Or? Yeah, and he was, like, hitting the... I see, thing. I can't remember. Yeah. There was a few times where he did the, the similar sort of motion. Yeah. Once he came out in, like, the little top hat, Jekyll and Hyde type yeah. outfit. Yep. With the cane that he threw the cane into the crowd. Yeah. He throws everything in the crowd. Fucking threw all his clothing in the crowd. Like, yeah. all the shirts he came out in. There was, like, a five-figure jersey he had on. Yeah. A sweater. Basically, he just went to his merch table, grabbed a bunch of shit, wore it for half a song, and threw it in the yeah. crowd. Yeah. Um, yeah, I saw the kid that got the cane at the end of the night, and then he threw the hat into the stands. Yep. Yeah. I thought that was really fucking cool. But the um, baseball bat thing, I can't remember when that was, but, yeah, he's definitely up there. Banging away yep. at his riser with the yep. baseball bat. That was bat. the first thing, the very first okay. thing. Okay, I couldn't remember when that was. Um, you mentioned the lighting earlier. I thought the lighting was some of the best lighting. Oh, I thought it was so cool. Because of the lasers. Yeah. Uh, all the smoke going out there and the different color lasers made some really cool geometric shapes. Yeah. The lighting. I almost thought, oh my god, if you're stoned right now, this would be trippy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I, I really enjoyed it. There was definitely the, the backlight as well that goes on that was shining in the eyes a little bit for me. And See, I did find that... That never bothered me. I, maybe because you're taller. Maybe. I, it, that was annoying me a little bit from time to time. But again, it was just sort of quick on and off. Like the strobe sort of lights. Like boom, 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 boom. Um, it wasn't that constant, here's a light in your eyes. Oh, okay. Which really drives me up. Especially with the spotlights, too. When we're in, like, seats. And the spotlight comes over and, like, hits me in the eye. Oh, yeah. Sometimes, depending on where you are, that's just where that light will go. And it's always going to be in your section. It's always... So, I noticed that at Metallica when we were in, I think, Madrid. And it was, like, the same... Because we almost yep. stood in the same spot. And, like, the same light would always be shining in my eye. We talked to Jari... Jari... Jerry and Darla. We talked to Jerry and Darla about seeing Megadeth and Lamb of God a few oh, years right. ago. Right. And they said they hated Lamb of God's lighting because I, my assumption is they were essentially in that same sort of section for Lamb of God's, like, this is the home base for this light. Yeah. And we've been to several shows where we've been to seats, and that's been the case. Yeah. Uh, that crater, um, Sepatora show yeah. is one example of that. And then when I did leave and go down to the floor, I, it was much better for me there. Yeah. Same with um, uh, Bowl for My Valentine as well. That was very annoying. So I, I get that. I hate when that happens. But I did feel like this show's lighting wasn't as bad. And again, it was that strobe lights. Um, however, there was one individual at the end of the night who had a medical issue. Yeah, it sounded like they got a seizure from the strobe lights. Yeah. Potentially, um, I mean, we, we don't know what happened, but... We don't know. We weren't on that side of the of the floor. Yeah. Um, Yvonne was saying, oh my god, it's a seizure type thing. Back up, let the medical personnel through, stop the show, turned up all the lights so people can get in and out. Yeah, they probably stopped the show for, what, 20 minutes? 15 minutes? Yeah, I'm not sure how long it was stopped for. About 10.30 to about... 10.45 or so. Yeah. So 15, yeah. 20 minutes, somewhere in there. Yeah. Um, Which is good. Yeah, you know, yeah. Mean. Stop stop everything. Make sure everybody's getting the medical attention they need to. We've been to other shows. Shit like that's happened as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty calm. Not common. Like no. it's, it's uncommon to happen. But when it does happen, there's definitely like, they all stop. right, everybody stop. Yeah. Let's clear away. Let's make sure everything's okay. Make sure everyone's okay. Right. Uh, which is awesome to see that, like, hey, we're taking care of each other. People around you, if it happens, like people are throwing their hands up, throwing lights up, like "Hey, give us some help now" type yeah. thing. 
um, Ivan coming over and making sure they're okay, um, eventually cleared out and, and whatnot, but he's sort of just up there vamping during this time, checking, making sure everyone's all right, making sure the medical attention's coming, and then going and interacting with the crowd as well. It, yeah. it was really good just vamping, trying to kill time to make sure everything was good and whatnot. Uh, but the lights were up, so you could look around, and definitely a lot of empty seats. Definitely saw a lot of people get up and leave. Uh, eventually, he did come out and was like, fuck, you know, we're only technically allowed to play until 11. Yeah. Which, again, made me smile because I saw that sign that said oh, 6.30 right, right, to right. 11. Yeah. And I was like, oh, shit. So, yeah, it's like a firm curfew. Um, yeah. And we've been to other things where it's like they have a curfew at such and such time. Yep, exactly. Um, so. Yeah, so I wonder what songs he was going to play or they were going to play. Yeah, they definitely cut a few songs out yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, but he did come out and it's like, hey, you know, this is going to take about 20 minutes or so to get resolved. Um, we'll come out. We might be able to play two, maybe three songs. Um, so if you want to stick around, awesome. Thank you for sticking around. If you want to leave, completely understand. Go ahead and it's... It, it, we won't take offense to it. Right. Uh, we will definitely be back here again and see you. Uh, thank you for coming out type thing. And honestly, yeah, you. it wasn't sure if they would even come back on stage. Yeah, that's kind of how I took it as, like, we should be back out. But, you know, like, depending on what was the situation, like, how it was happening, like, if they were going to or not. So. Yeah, and even when they... It, Oh, go ahead. go ahead. No, I was going to say, at the time when it all happened and they kind of stood there for a little bit, I actually thought it was like, they're probably only playing until 1040 and it's already 1030, so they might be done. I assumed they would go to 11. Um, well, I didn't know. I didn't yeah, see that yeah. sign. Gotcha, so gotcha. I didn't know until he came out and said it. Gotcha. So. Yeah, because it didn't even start until 930. Oh, possibly, yeah. Or a little after, I don't think. Yeah, I don't know. Because, uh, again, I was looking at the then. signs on the stage, or the, not the signs, the times on the stage. Um... So I, I did assume it was going to go to 11. Um, but, yeah, when they finally did come back on stage, I think they only played two more songs yep. uh, before they came out, and, like, there was talk of it being a seizure-related and whatnot. Um, Ivan was like, all right, light, our, our light engineer, um, no more strobe lights. Like, we're, we're done with that for tonight. Uh <laughs> And their first song back, the strobe lights came back on. And right after that song, he's like, turns to his band member. He's like, did you notice how uh, the light dude went right back to the strobe light? Fucking idiot. Uh, or something along those yeah. lines. And in my head, I was thinking like, yeah, kind of. But also, aren't these lights, I assume, pre-programmed? Programmed? And you just hit a button and you let it go. So but to he say, could have potentially just hit a button to be like no strobe or something. Maybe. Again, we don't. I don't yeah. know. And yeah. it could be pre-programmed and you don't have that option to say turn this light, one light off. It's probably all or nothing is what I'm thinking in my head. Possibly. Um, but we don't know. So that's where it was in my head. Like, he wanted to turn it off, but you can't for that song. The last song, though, they basically didn't have any lights whatsoever. They had a few colored lights that shine down into the crowd and then they asked for the crowd to turn on their phone lights to yeah. wave and whatnot. Um, so what was it? Under and Over It, they played, and then they played Bleeding. Is that what it was? Those are the two songs okay. that they came out and played. So I don't know what would have been played. What else would have been? Between, yeah. yeah. I don't know their normal set structure, yeah. I guess. So. Um, but again, that was a super cool moment. And even though they came back and played those two songs, it kind of felt weird to me to yeah. come back and play two songs. Um, it was a little bit. I could have easily seen, like, hey, you know, unfortunately due to the medical emergency, and we're just crunched on time anyway, we're going to call it a night. We're sorry. I could have completely seen that. It's cool they did come out and do it. I would have been completely fine and completely yeah. happy if they didn't yeah. do any other songs afterwards. Would other people in the crowd? Maybe not. Um, but given the situation, given the circumstances, I get it. it it's kind of weird to have that low of a low with that medical Yeah, and they come right back and to And come like, back, back up and yeah. like, all right, let's get the energy back up. Like, yeah. it's just, and you only have two songs to do that, like, get yeah. the energy. They did. The crowd got really back into it. 
Um, I enjoyed it. I did. It just, I could have also seen him saying, like, unfortunately, we're not going to yeah, do anything yeah. else. Yeah, I guess I was the same way. Like, if they would have been, you know, not played any more songs, I would have been cool with that and, and understood if that happened. But, yep. yeah. Yep. There's probably some people there that would have been really fucking pissed, but, yeah, yeah. oh, well. I mean... Whatever. Shit it is happens. what it is. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> so... There's more important things, and there will always be another show, so... Exactly. Um, yeah, in any case. Also, during this vamp time, um, he came out and was saying, did I hear right? This is the 28th birthday of the radio station here in town that they're celebrating. And he's like, you know, Clear Channel has fucked over radio so bad, it's good to see that there's still radio stations out there supporting our music and supporting metal and hard rock music, so... Give a big round of applause to the radio station here in town. You guys are lucky. Uh, which we both sort of turned to ourselves and looked like, <laughs> is Laser yeah. owned by Clear Channel? Um, which they are. They aren't. I thought you looked it up. No, it's some like something group in Des Moines. Like. I thought it was Sinclair Clear Channel. Oh, is it? Sinclair Clear Channel group. Oh. I think that's who it is. I thought it was some... I thought I read down at the bottom that it's some group from Des Moines. Or it's Clear Channel from Des Moines. Let's okay, look it up and find we'll, that We'll redo out. that. Yeah. Alright, so never mind. I always thought it was Clear Channel, but no, it's Sig- Siga Communications. S-A-G-A Communications. Yeah. Who I believe also owns The Hog. Oh. Let me double check Oh yeah, because we looked that up. That The Hog is owned by the same people that own Laser. So it must be... Sega Communications, yep. Yeah, okay. Cool. Yeah, we did look that up, and I thought they were on, but I just wanted to double-check. I always thought it was Sinclair, but dyslexia again. Maybe you just saw the S and just yeah. Again, like, yeah. assumed. <laughs> okay, so never mind. Awesome. I did not know that. Still, Rock 108 is better than you all. Sorry. <laughs> um, but also when we were in Des Moines, we found out, listening to Laser this oh, time yeah. around, they have, they have Lou Brutus. Lou Brutus now. They did yeah. not used to have hard drive, and yeah. now they have hard drive. Um, that's pretty cool because we listen to hard drive at home sometimes. Like, yeah. you'll pull it up on your phone. Um, I mean, through what? Like, the, the Rock, Rock 108, 108 app. app. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but okay. So, all right. I thought you showed me and it was, but no, it's not. Yeah. Okay. Um, but we did think that before that, we thought Laser was on by Sinclair. Yeah. Um, all right, never mind learn something new today uh but yeah that was kind of cool as well um other highlights for me for the show for the five finger bit or five finger set not bit um, <laughs> their bit bit they did yeah <laughs> they did their cover of house of the rising sun love that cover um i feel like they've played that at every show that we've seen them. i think they yeah. do that's yeah. one of their big hits for yeah. sure um honestly i was kind of hoping metallica would play that oh. during their set because they did a, an acoustic cover of it but I would have loved to see an a, a electric cover of them doing it but you have uh, Five Finger that's going to do it so why yeah, play yeah, the song again yeah. but he did reference that during this little acapella moment that he usually comes out and sings that since they're on tour with Metallica they were going to cover a song that Metallica covers and they did um, Turn, Turn the Page, the page. yeah for a little bit, not yeah, all like of it. Yeah, like one verse or something? Yeah, up to like the first yeah. chorus or something yeah. like that. Then he brought his son out on stage. The son said hi and asked his son, like, what song do you want to hear? And he wanted to hear The Man Who Stole the World, which is a Nirvana cover of a Bob Dylan song, I oh, believe. Oh, okay. So, and he's like, I, I don't know that song. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, he's really into Nirvana. I'm not, so whatever. Uh, yeah, th- that was a big highlight for me. It was a five-figure show. They put on a good show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, They brought a little kid up on stage who was not in the GA, but in the seats right behind the GA. Um, and let them sit on stage for one of the songs, Champagne, I believe it was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, another kid there had a sign that he threw, like, uh, bracelets he made or something out into the crowd. Again, throwing out all of his clothing, basically, basically out yeah. into the crowd. Uh, the kid who had a seizure, they gave um, him the baseball the bat. The baseball bat from the beginning, yeah. Yep. So, they put on a really good show. They're really genuine with their fans and really appreciate their fans. And it, and it shows. The fans love it, and they love their fans, and they put on a great show. Um, 
yeah, it, I I get people's dislike for their music or why they call them five flavored fruit punch or some shit like that. It's very radio friendly metal. It's yeah, probably yeah. the most radio friendly metal you'll hear out there, honestly. Um, like true metal metal. Like from a yeah, from that sound. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. Uh, you you have your radio metal for like three days grace and shine down. We've talked about earlier. But this is more of like the the mud vein type of metal that you hear, um, and there's just a lot more of of their stuff on the radio than there's like mud vein or slipknot or anything like right. that. Right. So I get their popularity. I get why people don't like them, um, but the show is good. I enjoy the show. Um, good energy. The show as a whole with all the bands was great. I had a yeah, fantastic time. It was a good night. night. It was a good lineup. It was a good night. It's a good mix of music. It's not all one sound. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I thought it was really good. A lot of people there for um, um, both Slaughter and Manson. We talked about that and people got really fucking into that. Um, the Funeral Prophets. Portrait. Damn it. The Funeral Portrait uh, had a great sound and a great energy to them as well. Uh, the crowd to me wasn't super into it, but whatever. It was, their set was awesome. I want to see them again. Um, and yeah, Five Finger, like we just said. I mean, it was a Five Finger show and it was a good show. Um, a bit pricey, but. Yeah, the price, it surprised me when you said. I I don't always know the prices of things just because you buy the tickets and. Yeah. I don't know. That kind of surprised me, but I guess with Man- Manson and Five Finger on the bill, it makes sense. Two headliners, basically, and they both put on two headlining sets, yeah. basically. Yeah. Um, all in all, though, I thought the price was worth it for what we got. I thought the show was awesome. Um, I'd see this again. That's like the third time in this episode you said all in all. And it just makes me think of the five, like, champagne. Like, all in all, it's a good life. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Oh, I didn't it's know like that. It's like their lyrics. Yeah. Oh, shit. All right. No, no, it's good. I just... Yeah, yeah. Like, I wasn't picking up on that. Yeah. All right. Just, maybe you say it all the time, and this is just the one time that I've noticed. Yeah, you, I don't know. You um, said it a lot. All in all, though, great fucking show. Let's <laughs> definitely see it again. Um, I don't know, anything else from you? Nope. Nope, it was a good show. I was happy to be there. Yeah, all in all, live music is... Uh, <laughs> live music's awesome, so go out, see some fucking live music, and we'll uh, catch you on the next show. Yep, bye.